Hey, and welcome to the first episode of Extra Features Hot Takes. Hey, and out in theaters this week, we have Bad Boys 3. First, I want to say, I don't know why we really need a Bad Boys 3, because Bad Boys 1 is a pretty good film. I recommend you see it. You should check it out. It's got uh, Martin Lawrence in it, and it's got Will Smith. And not like the new Will Smith, where he's kind of like, and eh, not as good. Jokes are flying in this. It works out well. It's good. And then they brought out Bad Boys 2, which was just a complete waste of anyone's time to watch it or make it. It's like, okay, we made this great film called Bad Boys 1. We're not going to do much in Bad Boys 2. We're just going to go have Mike Lowry, which I think is Martin Lawrence's character, if I remember correctly, whining the whole time. And that's just not interesting. So... Here we go. Now we have Bad Boys 3, because, you know, because if you have a bad Bad Boys 2, what do you need a Bad Boys 3 for? Martin Lawrence needs cash. That's exactly it. Will Smith is doing fine, but Martin Lawrence, probably not doing as well. So, who else do we have in the film? Alexander Ludwig? Yeah, don't know who he is. Don't really care. Vanessa Huggins? She, she's mildly okay. I think she's doing better on the Christmas circuit with her Christmas films than she actually is there. Joe Pantaloni's back. And that's really about it for Bad Boys for Life. I'm sure it's not that exciting, but eh, if you want to check it out. Next up, we have Doolittle, which has the great and powerful Robert Downey Jr. Really? Robert Downey Jr. really that great? He was Iron Man. Well-written character. He did the performance well. He looks like Iron Man. Kind of works out for him. But other than that, Marvel... He's never been really that good. He's always been solid, but I wouldn't say he's great. Now he's back with another version of Doolittle. Really? Do we really need this? It's going to be like The Lion King 2.0. It's going to have very little story. We get to look at nice CGI animals. And Michael Sheen plays the bad guy and Jim Broadbent's in it too. And of course, Antonio Banderas is going to be in it. And he goes to get a bunch of voices of Jesse Buckley Emma Thompson, Remy Malek, John Cena, because, you know, you cannot have enough John Cena. Camille Nanjiani, Octavia Spencer, Tom Holland, Craig Robinson, Ray Fiennes, Gomez, Marion Cudillard. Do you see why you have these voices? So you know the movie right there is going to tell you it's going to be focusing on the animals, not on the story. As far as I'm concerned, not going to be that interesting. I guess next on the hot take, I want to go into the Academy Awards, since the nominations just got released. Everybody's going on about J-Lo, J-Lo, J-Lo. She was supposed to get a nod. Did anybody see Hustlers? It was okay. At best. J-Lo is eh, okay. The film is just okay. It's not going to set the world on fire. She didn't do a great performance. Like, who do you want to replace? Scar Joe, who's in Jojo Rabbit? I think not. I really think J-Lo was fine for what she did. I don't think she put on this amazing performance. It's just people like J-Lo, so they get in their minds that, oh, J-Lo's going to get an award. Well, she didn't get over it. Next up, I want to go to certain people not getting in. Um, Adam Sandler, I'm also hearing complaints about. You know, I love Uncut Gems. I think it's a fabulous film. I really, really think it's good. I really think you should see it if you haven't seen it. But was he really that good in the film? No. Again, a very well-written film. Absolutely perfect. And probably written for Adam Sandler in some ways. You can see it. But is he good in the film? No. The film is good. He's not. Next up, we have the best category. category. Jonathan Popes, Adam Driver, and Tony Bomderis, Joaquin Phoenix, and Leonardo DiCaprio. I really have no complaints with any of this. I think it's great. I think Two Popes is a film you should see if you haven't. Marriage Story is excellent. Pain and Glory, I honestly will say I haven't seen yet, so I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. But I will. Don't you worry. And I also think um, we should uh, focus a little bit on foreign films. I really think everybody needs to see Parasite. You know, if you don't like this week's films, which I don't think is much in the offering, and Parasite is still playing in your theater, please, please, please go see Parasite. And, I mean, we have a lot. Joker's got 11 nominations. Do we really think Joaquin's going to come through with the win? Quite possibly. But let's look at the best picture for about 30 seconds. We have Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Once Upon a Time in Highwood, Mary Story, Parasite, 1917. One thing about this when making your Oscar picks, which we will get into in a later show, I promise, that you got to look at if the director got nominated. So... We know the director of Little Women didn't get nominated. It can't win. 
the director of Jojo Wabbit, I can't, don't think, got nominated. Not going to win. Director Parasite did win, but the Academy has never picked a foreign film, even though this is probably one of the best films of the year. So you got to look at whom has got a chance of winning. Irishman, Joker, probably two front runners. Ford Ferrari is a phenomenal film, but again, I don't think it's again. And I know you're going to say to me, hey, Simon, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood won the Golden Globes. Well, I don't have time for that nonsense. That's just people that are like, oh, look, I have that star I want to meet. So they invite them to the award show. Nothing else really happens. Actress in a supporting role. I mean, is there even an argument here reading out these categories? I mean, Laura Dern from Marriage Story, right? She's going to win. Well, i like to spend a little bit more time on the Oscars, but I will as we get closer. One other thing I just want to talk about before I go is going to a film etiquette, because this really bugs me. So I'm one of these people that is very fussy about a seat. I have a definite row I always want to sit in and a place I enjoy sitting. I always try to leave a buffer seat just because I don't like to bug people. I don't want to sit beside anyone, but if I have to, that's fine. I accept that. Sometimes that buffer seat's going to disappear, and eh, it's the way left goes. So I don't like pre-trailers, so I tend not to watch them, and I tend to want to hear other people commenting on them. So what I'm asking is, if you're in a theater, please be quiet. Enjoy the film. I don't need to hear you texting on your phone, and yes, many of you do it, or I also, I don't want you picking up your phone to see what time it is or what texts you got. If you feel a need to do these things, no problem. Go outside. We have this thing called the hallway that's not dark and not interrupting other people's theater experience. People need to realize we're not in your home. No, not in your home. You're at a theater where I have paid for it and you have paid for it to be there. So put the phones away and enjoy your time at the film. If the film stinks that bad, leave. Number two, um, I have no issues with people bringing in movie snacks. If you're like me that disagree with the high cost of popcorn and candy and drinks, bring your own. I think that's okay. I mean, you're going to say to me, well, that's the theater makes money. Well, if the theater wanted to make more money, maybe bring the prices down a bit, and maybe I would buy more. You'll still make your same profit margin. It may cost you a little bit more in cost factor, but I think $10 for drink and popcorn is a little excessive when I can get four popcorns in my microwave for a quarter a bag, you know, like four for a dollar, dollar store, whatever they sell, or a box, you know, for two bucks. I think uh, somebody's making some money here. Um, trailers. Like them or hate them, I, I have no time for them. I think they ruin movies. I've stated that in the past to my friends, and I'm stating it out to you guys uh, out there. So I guess that's it. You'll have me back next week where I'll discuss whatever new releases are coming out and whatever else has bugged me that week about film, or maybe I'll recommend some films you guys like. If you guys want to hear more of me, you can check me out in the Extra Features podcast at www.extrafeatures.ca and... Hope to hear from you guys and drop me an email at the movie buff. I don't know what the email is. He forgot to give it to me, but I'll know it for next time. Bye.